Many people think of Hawaii as paradise because it is. Many people also think about how beautiful the Aloha spirit is with the Hawaiian people. It's true. And many people also think of how insanely expensive it is to both visit and live in Hawaii. Well, there's this Hawaiian couple who had their first baby as sophomores in high school. By 21, they had four in total and not a dime to their name, but living in paradise and full of Aloha spirit helps, but the insanely high cost of living was not kind. Fast forward to today, they're in their early 40s and own multiple properties, including this quaint little dome that pays for their entire five acres on the big island of Hawaii and it funds their entire dream life. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how they did it and how you can too. Now, I've been on a small world tour this past month, and I was actually just checking out places in New Zealand, Australia, and even Japan, and ultimately ended up in Hawaii. But when I travel, I try and visit with members from my Land Hacker program, and they are from literally all over the world, so to see their properties and hear their stories firsthand. And that's how I landed here on the big island of Hawaii with two of our Land Hacker members, Kapina and Shan. Normally when I'm not traveling, I'm building stuff, teaching classes, making videos, and chilling with my orange cat. Mostly hanging out with my orange cat. But I need to show you how Kapena and Shan are crushing it here in paradise with one of the coolest properties I've ever seen. When we bought our first house, paid that off on our program in like four years. Yeah. Paid that off and now that we had that equity, we pulled the equity out, bought the next property and we mm. did 12 properties. Nice. All here in Kona, all within probably a 10 mile radius of where we are now. How many years did it take? Five years. Five, five years. years, 12 yeah, properties. Yeah, five years, 12 properties. And yeah. this is the crown jewel. Yeah, the... this is where this is where everything is. It's a five acre property. And I thought I was just coming here to check out their dome, but I walked away with a reminder and three really great lessons I wish my school had taught me. In this video, we're gonna break down the cost to build, get a tour of the dome, property, and area, see how they've made well over $1.3 million on this property, as well as how this dome is paying for itself in about a year and then funding their dream life. And then of course, I'm going to show you how you can do it too. Welcome to the Big Island of Hawaii, where normally you'd probably think that I'm here for this guy, the shipping container home, but nope, I am here because of this guy right here, a brand new geodesic dome that is making a tremendous amount of money for its host, who just also happen to be my members inside our program. On this land hack, out here on five acres, on Kona, with this beautiful view of the ocean, and the island itself. Let's go take a look at it. But first we have to address the giant problem on the islands when it comes to construction. So the biggest challenge was the time thing? The time and the help, the, the labor. labor. Yeah. yeah, the labor yeah. came out to be a lot and then we had to extend it and towards the ending, he ended up just jumping in and finishing yeah. the deck. Yeah, yeah. so that there's, was. There's some things that here in this town you have to kind of pre-reserve somebody like in months, weeks, if not months ahead. The yeah, labor, the yeah labor. so when something falls through, yeah. getting someone in right away is right. not always like gonna happen. There's a labor shortage, but here's the breakdown of the costs. For so that, the deck itself, I think we're going over before, it was about 19,000. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. 14,000 for the, the monoslope shed slash yep. bathroom. The bathroom. Uh -huh. yeah. whole bathroom. Mm -hmm. And then the 12,000 for the dome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Furniture inside, how much? I would say we're probably right around nine. 9,000 yeah. for yeah. the furniture. Yeah. Nine. And then everything above that, we'll add the math on the screen, but yeah. everything right. above that is then labor. Right. Yeah. With the exactly. plumbing and electric. And, yep. And Which is all done that, professionally and up yeah. to code. Yeah, yeah. for yeah. sure. Okay. And if you're interested in seeing how to run numbers on places like domes, container homes, or even just a single family home, check out my deal analysis spreadsheet here where I run through the unit economics. We can break things down by month. And then obviously you can expand that out into annual projections, which is huge before we go into any type of business or property deal. Free download just down below. Click on the link. Okay. So now we know how much everything was, which is about right with my rough estimates too. Now remember, they have to pay the Hawaiian premium because living on the islands. But there's a lot of other working expenses that's not included in just what we see. Let's talk utilities. Always, whenever it comes to shipping container homes, dome homes, tree houses, the number one question, or one of the first questions I get is like, okay, how do I do utilities? That's the answer. Well, in this case, it's tapping into existing power or existing water. So in this case, that power pole feeds the main house and it goes underground here, which is 18 inches to meet code, but they put down 25 inches. It goes down here and then follow me. Humidity in the heat, it's kind of hard to run. That's actually a pretty far run. All the way over here to the power. 
So we've got power here, and that's how they're operating the inside, the refrigerator, the lights, the bathroom, all that good stuff. So it turns out that the horizontal work, which includes the excavation, trenching, plumbing, septic, and power, what is about $36,000. Now this also includes some other miscellaneous labor. Bringing their total to- Total out the door, we're at 90. Okay. 90 for everything. And so that's the materials for the deck, the dome. The labor. The bathroom the labor. Now, I know this sounds like a lot. It is a lot of money. But remember, we're on Paradise Island, about 2,400 miles away from the mainland. So that means expensive materials and very limited labor. I know it was costing me right around $55,000, and that is my crew literally building it right outside as we're filming this right now. And I know folks who are doing it themselves for under 30000 But for how remote they are, $90,000 was their final cost. Now, there's one lesson that I learned at 19 that changed my entire view of money that coincidentally Capena and Shan also followed. Surprise, surprise, we learned from the same person. We read Rich Dad, Poor Dad in like 2006. Uh, that was the that turning was point the turning for the point. real estate. Yeah, yeah, it really was. But here's the money lesson that'll change everything for you. Build and acquire assets, that's it. Assets are anything that saves or makes you money. Now, it's easy to think, oh, okay, so buy stocks, bonds, and real estate. Got it. No. Those can definitely be considered assets, but fun and unique things can be too, like their dome or even my first camera right here are considered assets. Now, this initial $500 investment, I think you can buy these for like 250 now, has made me millions of dollars over the years. Their dome, you'll see in a little bit, will pay for their entire property and fund their European vacations. Basically, this has become like our travel fund. Yeah. <laughs> so like we just keep doing this. If we can make $50,000 a year and have a travel fund or 75 or 100 or whatever it is, that's really what it is. So buy businesses, properties, and even education and skills. Anything that can generate you money, not cost you money. Now this may shock you a bit, but the home that you're living in, the crypto that you bought, or the stock options that you're speculating on on Robinhood are not assets. They're more like liabilities because they cost you money and more importantly, they're not generating you income. What I really like about this place is that these, oh, dang it, pause. Now, what I really like about these geodesic domes is that they are actually relatively inexpensive to put up and they can create a tremendous cash flow. But the really big thing that I love about this project and what we really push and talk about inside the program is not just building out this amazing experience for folks, the location, the permits, how to run utilities to these type of things, but it's about how to take advantage of a killer view like this. And they knocked it out of the park. Now, one of the things I love about Geodesic Domes is that it actually is a lot of square footage for what you're paying for. This right here is a 24 foot dome and you're getting roughly, if I remember correctly, about 380 square feet. I could be slightly off on that because I haven't ran those numbers in a little bit. But as you can see, what makes a space fill really big, and this is for this is a tip for anybody who's building a tiny home or working on creating unique rentals, is having really high ceilings. And I remember if my numbers are right here, that the top of the ceiling here, the top of the dome here is about 14 feet up in the air. Now, the thing with most domes that people really fall in love with is the big windows here. And so it brings in a ton of natural light. I personally just love domes because they go up relatively easily. It's relatively inexpensive and you get this banger view like we have right here. And it creates just a really cool experience for folks who are trying to get away from it all. And it truly is glamping to the next level. And a couple of things they did really well here is a look at this custom note. This little message they put inside a frame welcoming us here to the, uh, the space. They even have the welcome booklet right here with Wi-Fi information on everything that's around the space, how to use things, and where we should go eat for dinner and lunch and stuff like that too. Brilliant, love it. I love that they put it right here in the bed, so for sure you'll see it. The other thing that we talk a lot about is freebies. So a lot of times hosts, 
including me, we nickel and dime our guests, and we shouldn't be doing that. And I'm talking about past Kai here. So what I mean by nickel and diming is that you don't give a lot of freebies. And I'm of the strong opinion to give as many freebies as possible so it feels like an elevated experience. In this case, we've got Hawaiian drinks, we've got Hawaiian, I believe this is mango bread that I'm super excited to dive into. And then even in the fridge itself, we've got chocolate, macadamia nuts, we've got uh, half and half creamer for the coffee, the Kahuna coffee here. We've got extra water bottles, really, everything that we could really want once we first arrive and we're tired, we got here from the airport and we just wanna relax. And what also puts it uh, over the top too that I really like is they're thinking about the little stuff. So we're in Hawaii, it does rain. They have two nice big umbrellas for us here. And if we go back out here, you're coming to Hawaii, you're coming to Kona, you're probably gonna get in the water. You're going to the beach. You've got snorkeling equipment, beach chairs, and you got towels. Pretty dang good. <laughs> Stop. Why do you look like you're about to puke? Now let's go meet Capenna and Shan. This is the icing on the cake. This is our icing, icing. Yeah. yeah. I love it. Yeah. I love the cake. <laughs> <laughs> what I mean, to me, what I love, I we're totally learning short-term vacation rentals and like, you know, through your through your coaching, that's been super helpful to us yes. for us to see a, a new angle on it. Definitely. And, be, and because of that, like we realize like really how blessed we are to be in a position where we're not doing anything because we have to anymore. We're like, we, we've been working hard this this whole time and hustling and hustling. And you know, you, you keep on going on through life and not until you sit and you're in a class or a cohort with people and you realize like they're just starting. They're like, they're just trying to get money to survive. Right. And you really, I start being really grateful for like, wow, that we have gone through that journey. Yeah. Now, if this is something that interests you, I actually highly recommend that you come out here to Hawaii. I know, gotta break your arm. Really gotta bend your arm. <laughs> Really gotta. Twist your arm. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, but if you really wanna come out to Hawaii and check this out, I have a link down to their Airbnb just down below. But if you really wanna learn more about how people are doing this and getting into one of the hottest asset classes in real estate right now, which are secluded, rural, unique properties like dome homes, earth homes, tree houses, shipping container homes, tiny homes, that type of stuff, you gotta join and check out our Land Hacker Community Program where we've got several hundreds of people who are doing this exact same thing and they're doing it successfully. And if you wanna learn more from yours truly where I am doing, working on four, five, four, going to be five construction projects here pretty soon, set up a free call with me or somebody on my team and see if it's a good fit for you. Classes and office hours are happening every week and every month. Hopefully, I'll see you in the next one. Aside from their incredible view, their property is located literally next door to some of the world's best coffee farms. Kona coffee. And did you know you can legally put only 10% Kona beans in your coffee blend and still call it Kona coffee? You also have amazing beaches, snorkeling, stand-up paddle boarding, and not to mention the volcanic national park and hiking all over the island. When you combine the area and the number of tourists coming to the island, weather, and just pure natural beauty of Hawaii with such a unique space like the dome, it's no wonder why this is turning out to be such a great financial decision for them. We eventually want to put like right in the center area, probably like a community like where like there's chairs and a fire pit where they yeah. When when there's both of them working, they could both have use of it. But like, I mean, look at that view. So when you guys come <laughs> back, the shipping container will be uh, we'll operational. Be <laughs> yeah. Part of your Discord that I love is always going there and getting ideas from other people that what what they're doing what as far as yeah, yeah, what they're if they have shipping containers, geodome, or RVs, yeah. Yeah. or uh, Dreamlight uh, Dreamliners. Yep. Airstreams. 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 So, love going to the, to the uh, Discord and getting ideas from, from other people. And there's so much room to grow on the property since there are three distinct tiers that each are just over an acre large. Now, the top tier is where the dome is and the future container home will be along with the event venue because obviously views. Second tier is reserved for the happy couple and their family. And Kapina's little chipping station where he practices golf swing. Yeah, and there's a big grass area. Like when we have family over, like we'll put a tent out and like that's yeah. where like, it's just like nice and grass. So the, yeah. the grandson can run around there eventually, yeah, but yeah. It's also my putting area. <laughs> yeah, he puts, yeah, yeah, you'll see his golf balls. balls. Yeah. <laughs> and the lowest tier will be a little A-frame cabin and future tea farm. We've got the property for only $265,000. This property was two sixty dollars Yeah, just four years ago. You heard them right. $265,000 was all it took to purchase this property. The, the two sixty five dollars was also a crazy price. Yeah. So right. that probably should have been sold for like eight or nine. How much is this trace now today? 
The last I heard with just the house on it, does it include the dome or anything, anything else? 1.6. And I think we only did like 140,000 in like earthwork, earthwork yeah. and moving things out, which was, I mean, I don't say was, only, but there was still trees that we need, had to remove, but I want to put more trees here that I actually want to be around. Sure, yeah. Now, in all honesty, the property should have sold for a lot more, but with tax lien issues, trash, dozens of cars, and a homeowner who refused to leave, I know it's weird, nobody wanted to deal with this troubled property. That's why they got such a killer deal on it. It's the same thing about this property that I'm at right now. I paid $90,000 cash for it because there was supposedly landslide issues and past owner problems. This property was bought by the previous owner for around $365,000. Took me a few days and about $5,000 to clear everything up and the property value shot back up. Don't overlook homes and properties that look like a mess. A lot of times they could be some of the best deals. Yes. Because when you say like, hey, I live in Hawaii on five acres with one of the most beautiful views that you can buy. <laughs> <laughs> and there's three to four different ways that we make money and it just feeds our lifestyle. We yes. travel internationally, domestically, yeah. and we live on the property and it's our dream life. Yeah. And yeah. we're in our 40s. Like life by design. Yeah. Exactly. One of the great things about this style of investing, I call it land hacking, but feel free to name it anything you want, is that you get to design the life you want to live. No bosses fighting with traffic every morning and night or dealing with office drama and politics. I love it because you can literally build a lifestyle that suits you while not only having what I call free property, but you getting paid for it. Now, I personally wanted to leave my office gig and live out in the country and surf all day. So I did that with my properties. Shannon and Kempena here wanted to live their island life, raise their kids and travel to Europe twice a year. And now they have this. And while I was editing this video and texting with Shan for some follow-up B-roll and notes, she sent me this. After just two months of going live with the dome, they've already booked tickets for two weeks back in Europe. Now, making money for the sake of making money is an endless pursuit. Having a life worth living while making that money is far more fun. I call this our travel fund of the US. Mm -hmm. The shipping, That'll be our international travel the shipping fund. Shipping container. Will be the international. <laughs> but that's that's really how things started and how they kind of evolved and why we're here. And actually, after waiting for the month to end and looking at the real numbers, we saw that the income was much better than expected, almost double. The first month was just a partial month where they did clear about thirty five hundred dollars. However, the month after they took in over sixty six hundred dollars, bringing the total revenue of just over ten thousand dollars in exactly sixty days. That's an average of five thousand dollars a month during non peak season in months, not too bad. Now we know they bought the place for 265 and added another $140,000 into it. They still owe roughly $330,000 with monthly mortgage, utilities, taxes, insurance, rounding that up to about $3,500 a month. That's a net profit of $1,500 every month. Now, before I get into all the people blowing up the comment section saying that $1,500 a month is not that much, think about that for a second. A dome tent is essentially paying all of their bills and giving them an extra $1,500 in spending money. Considering that's half the average American take home salary, that dome is well worth it. Now, which takes me to the last lesson that they showed me, do more with less. Now, spending money doesn't mean you'll make more. There are homes people literally buy for half a million that don't cash flow $1,500 a month. And those require substantially more work, furniture, and upkeep. Now, here are some key metrics always worth looking into. Break even, payback of your initial investment, and cash on cash return. Now, starting with those three key areas, break even is the first place that we go to first. And it's pretty straightforward. It's basically, how do we get a property or a business to zero? We don't make money, we don't lose money. Now, the nice thing about this, it's really easy to calculate. We need to first figure out how much it costs each month to operate that property. And in this case, the dome itself is very inexpensive. Outside of cleaning supplies, insurance, and some extra utilities, which is gonna be an approximate $200 extra a month, it's not that much. And then also considering that it's about $250 average per night to book the dome, we're looking at a break even of less than a day. Essentially, one booked day pays for the dome every single month. That is what we call being operationally leveraged, and it's a very good thing. Second is we wanna look at payback. Payback is essentially how fast can we recoup our initial sunk investment. So in this case, in Capana and Shan's case, they invested $90,000. Dollars. Now, for a lot of us, I really think that it should be closer to maybe 50 or 60 back on the mainland, but let's use 90 for right now. So if they're at 90 and we believe that, or we've seen that they make $5,000 average each month, that gives us 18 months to break even, which is really good. One and a half years to three years, 18 to 36 months is actually the window of time that we really look at when we're looking at properties such as this. So in terms of payback, 
looking good. Now the last area that we really wanna look at is cash on cash returns. And in this situation, again, we're gonna use that $90,000 figure. And we're gonna look at it on a very year to year basis. So we're gonna look at monthly, we're gonna look at year over year. So each year, $5,000 a month on average, that's $60,000 every single year, which gives us a cash on cash return of 67% which is really good. Now we can always measure this against the stock market if you guys want to, or the average of real estate appreciation or even commercial multifamily, okay? And the stock market, if you average it over 120 years, don't get me started on that, you're looking at between nine to 11%. With uh, real estate, you're looking at five to 6% as an annual average. And then with multifamily commercial, you're looking at cap rates usually between six to maybe 10%. So to look at a cash on cash return of 67%, not too bad. Once they start going live with their other income streams, such as a container home, tea farm, and event venue, those numbers will grow significantly. Okay, so how can you do something like this too? Now, I've broken down their steps for you. First is understand the market that you wanna buy in and looking for the diamonds in the rough. Don't let an ugly house, trash, or even legal problems push you away from a property. That's where you wanna dig deeper and see if you can really find that great deal. Second, know what you can do to improve the property and quickly jump the valuation, or in this case, equity. Third, make sure the location, space, and view attracts a large audience that comes to the area and is willing to pay you to experience what you have to offer. Fourth is understand the zoning and permits required for that area. Fifth is create a clear budget and understand the economics of that property and understand what income streams you can produce. And then sixth, design and build your project to be different, not necessarily just better. And then seventh, of course, join me and Compenna, Shan, and hundreds of others in the Land Hacker program to see how we can help and support you do something very similar to this. Now go build something cool. Bye.